Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking about how to make more and work less. So if you have a service company, especially window cleaning or anything, make sure to stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up? If it's your first time here, have a look around. Enjoy the ultimate sticker wall. Uh, Hopefully it doesn't suck. Hopefully you want to watch a bunch more episodes. There's over 190 episodes of this, 30 minutes or longer, all about the window cleaning side of business. Some suck, some are good, but either way, hopefully you can go and catch up on those. If you are one of the cool kids, if you're somebody who uh, watches every episode, by the way, if you're watching on YouTube, give it a thumbs up and make sure to comment. You listen to the podcast. If you're listening on iTunes or any other podcast platform, make sure to give it a review. And uh, more importantly, you buy your supplies through me, shameless plug, then thank you. It is because of you that I get brand name shampoo in this luxurious hair that's turning gray. Uh, thank you. By the way, if you are one of the cool kids, that's the sticker right there. It's so hard to do this backwards. The cool kid certified sticker. Uh, you have it. Show it off proudly. Take pictures of it. Uh, but if more importantly, you've gotten that, you watch every episode, and you're the epic cool kid, then that is because you also subscribe to America Widow Cleaner Magazine. Which, by the way, if you haven't seen it yet, this is the February sticker sheet. Uh, there you go. Uh, just say no with the uh, Dino. So, anyway, subscribe to American Window Cleaner Magazine if you haven't already. Whew, shameless plugs over. But today, we're talking all about how to make more and work less, which everybody says, hey, would you like to work making $3,500 a, a month working from home, a minimal 30 minutes a day? That's not what I'm talking about. Like, building a business, you're still going to have to work. You're going to have to work for it. Like, I know that, you know that. There is no easy way to go about it. But making more money than you did last year, there are some ways to go about that. There's one thing to kind of remember. When all this is said and done, people will always, always, always complain to me. And they'll say, I don't know why you want to charge so much. Like, you're taking advantage of people. That is the dumbest The dumbest thing I could ever think of is if you think that taking advantage of somebody is charging them more for a service that they don't need, then I'm not quite sure uh, where your idea is on that. Now, I'm not saying to go and charge uh, $30,000 per window because you're not going to have any business, right? Ferrari exists. There's still a client base. for for, There's Bugattis, man. What was the the car that... uh, 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 Tracy Morgan crashed. It was a two million dollar car. It was a two million dollar car. There's a market for that. If they go two million dollars is too much for a car, you go then don't buy it. Two million dollars. Oh, you're taking advantage of people. A Bugatti should cost thirty thousand well, dollars. How would you think that, right? It's the same thing. We are a luxury business. And the hardest part about it, for me at least, was, I don't know if it's the hardest part for you, uh, tell me down below. Here's the question of the day. If you're on YouTube or go to YouTube, tell me what the hardest part of running a business was for you to kind of comprehend or understand. But for me, it was that we are a luxury. Like in the beginning, I thought, man, people need this. They don't, then they're not on ladders. Like, oh man, we're just, we're, we're helping so many people, which you totally are still helping people, but it took me years to really grasp the idea and concept that we're a luxury business. No one dies if we don't show up. No one, uh, you know, uh, no one's house burns to the ground if we don't show up. Now, if you're doing house washing, I get this all the time. People are like, well, yeah, but then they get fines from the H. Okay. Well, that's maybe something different, but they could do it themselves right? We're just on the luxury side of things. Now, what that means is, is our experience that we're, we're creating has to be a luxury experience, right? 
We can't show up looking like dumpsters. Our trucks can't look like garbage fires. Like it, you, you have to be at another standard because we're a luxury. We know that. That's why you guys are taking so much pride in your logos and branding and all that stuff, right? But on the same side of it is that we charge, we charge a premium for what we do because we're a luxury, right? If you go to a place that fixes Rolex watches, they're going to be more expensive than a place that fixes, you know, I'm trying to think of a cheap watch brand. <laughs> Casio. I think Casio makes good bro. Anyway, you know what I'm saying, right? If you do things in a luxury, it's always more. And the reason is, is not to exploit that, but it's that it's a luxury. It's a completely different service, right? If you go and you take your yacht in to get something replaced or an oil change on your Ferrari, the first oil change, the first tune up, the first 2,500 miles of owning a Ferrari is $25,000. They take the whole motor apart. They look through everything and they see if there's shavings, if everything's done right, if it's tracking right, they did everything. $25,000. And people don't go, well, <laughs> I'm going to take my brand new Ferrari. Instead of doing that, I'm just going to go to Sam's Club or Farm and Fleet or whatever local place you have. I'm going to have them change the oil for $30. Those people are taking advantage. No right? So understanding we're a luxury really does put us kind of on another platform as far as understanding what we charge, why we charge, right? Our minimum, even those of you who are out there who go, I, uh, I don't overcharge. I'm the lowest in my area, which of course everybody claims not to be. But even the lowest guys in the area are still making like 50 bucks an hour, right? You should be closer to $75 a man hour, $75 a man hour to clean bird poop off windows. That's kind of what we do right so understanding that understands like makes it so you can understand more you can basically take all that and go okay well that's why i can charge a little bit more right and here's a few ideas to kind of go over on how to make more money but there's once you understand the luxury that we're a luxury now you understand everything right uh a doctor charges $200 $200 an hour, lawyer charges $200 an hour, whatever it is. And I've made more than $200 an hour. I know some of you have also, right? It's not uncommon for some projects and different things, especially like roof cleaning. But it doesn't mean that our job is any less important because we're still making someone happy. Like a transaction happens when somebody is happy to pay for it in return of getting it, right? I sold two $10 bills on... Uh, eBay, two $10 bills, like anything, that just happened to be star notes. I found them. I worked at a credit union at the time, and I got these two bills, and uh, I, I, as my series going off, uh, but I got these two $10 bills, literally worth $20, put them on eBay, and sold them for $286. I sold two $10 bills for $286. That right there tells you that value or what somebody's going to pay for something is completely connected to how much they want it or what it means to them or what it does for them. For window cleaning, for pressure washing, for roof cleaning, all that fun stuff, it makes people happy. They have a clean house. If they have pride, they fix that, right? They're happy spending that money. So here's a few things you got to do, I think, to make more money and work less. Like, listen... I'm not saying you're going to work less than you are already, but you're not going to have to work more for more money. Sometimes people go, well, uh, right now, you know, I'm a one-man show. I'm doing, you know, $80,000 a year, $50,000 a year, but I want to go to $60,000 a year, right? Uh, That's $10,000 more work. I got to do so much more work. I'm already working a ton. It's not necessarily how it works. There's other things you can kind of do. First off, first and foremost, especially right now, because of the time of year, this is super, super important. But there's spring and fall adjustments. Spring, your prices will always be higher than they will in the middle of July. Always. They'll always be more in fall than they will be in the middle of winter. Now, people are like, well, that's price gouging. No, that's not price gouging. That's not what that is. What it is is that your service is needed. You have lots of bookings to do. You're filling up. I know people who are filled up for two months already. 
And it's March. When I'm recording this, it's the beginning of March, and people are already filled up for two months. This year, by the way, put it on record. Save it. It's going to be absolutely amazing for all of you. This this year is just, it's trending already to be absolutely mind-blowingly amazing. So anyway, on that on the side of note. You should be charging more in spring and fall. Now, how you do that is that your 20-window minimum or 20-window service, right? A lot of us use that. That price can fluctuate. Right now, say it's normally 20 windows inside and out, 199 Doesn't include track sales frames, all that fun stuff, right? But it is 199 for even numbers, 20 windows. When you get into spring, it should be 249 right? And if somebody calls and they go, oh man, I don't know. This is a little bit of pricey for me. No, it's a little bit. I thought I saw you guys had it for one one ninety nine. We do. Yeah, absolutely. If you want it for one ninety nine, uh, we have availability in July, actually the big first week of August. I can get you in on the 2nd of August and uh, get you in at that one ninety nine rate. Uh, the two forty nine is, is a spring price. Those other ones are better when we're uh, slower. I've had that and that's great for people who are like, oh, you know what? I can wait. Now, all of a sudden, you're filling up July, you're filling up August, and you're getting those people when it's hot right now. People are like, well, yeah, but you're making less. No, you're making what you would have made at $199, but you're making more in spring. When people are busier, supply and demand, more people need you, they want you, you have to kind of change that and fluctuate it as seasons go. Because guess what? If somebody calls me in January and they're like, I want my windows done, I am more than willing to give them the lowest price that I have out of all of my seasons because I'm just sitting on my thumb anyway, right? So having that is just utilizing your calendar, utilizing your busy time. And here's the other thing. If you're in the middle of spring and now you do a house for $249 instead of $200, right? For every four houses you do, it's like doing a fifth house free or like getting every four houses you do, you're actually doing five houses in January. It's the same price. So you're making more and working less than you would have, right? So make sure you're doing that. Again, it fills space and it allows you then to drop that price back down if somebody needs it. You're not doing coupons. You're not discounting because there's so many of you who are against discounting. And by the way, by the way, you guys know I'm a product rep with Window Cleaning Resource. That's how I make my cheddar. There's nothing funnier to me than every time you're on a forum that people go, oh, I'm not the cheapest. I'd never be the cheapest. I'm not the cheapest. No, nah, I'd never get the cheap. And then they call you and go, oh, you're not the cheapest. I found this rubber. Literally, I've had a guy uh, bring his whole order to another company because it, uh, it was uh, $3.10 cheaper. Anyway, just a little gripe for any of you, right? But there you go. That's kind of a a big thing. Fall is the same. Fall is busy. So when fall starts, you increase your prices back up and they go, oh man, that's a little bit more than I thought. And we're like, hey, not a problem. How does January look? How does February look, right? Wherever your slow spots are, you can fill that in with that. That's how you work less than you would have to make the same amount of money. And it also just makes sense. It's just a premium at premium times. Uh, Another one is bundling services. Bundling services is something that a lot of you may not really do, or you may not push. Well, like I called for window cleaning. I don't think he wants anything else. Uh, You have to ask. You have to ask. The reason that McDonald's started this so long ago, and they've done so, been so successful with it, is the, the, would you like fries with that? Look up the stats because I wish I would have, I don't, you know, I don't do research (laughs) for these episodes or shows. Uh, So I should have done research, but I didn't know I was going to be babbling about McDonald's. But look at that. The amount percentage that they increased their total revenue by just saying, oh, would you like fries with that? Instead of going, well, they can order a cheeseburger. They don't really want fries. Otherwise, they would have ordered fries. I'll have a cheeseburger. Would you like fries with that? They go, yeah, yeah, I'll take fries. What? So if you have somebody come to you saying, I would love exterior window cleaning, 149. Ah, is that the uh, the cheapest price you got? 140 is uh yes it is, you know, that's our, our minimum, but we could certainly get you okay, we'll do that. Okay, not a problem. And uh, before we go there and do the outside of your windows, uh, how's the siding looking? Are you doing all right on that? Is it green? Uh, is it dirty? Did you want us to wash that? 
Ah, what's that cost? That's two ninety nine. Hmm. All right, all right. So uh, for the house wash and the windows, it would end up being uh, four forty nine. Yep, actually four forty eight. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. I couldn't tell you the hundred times, probably. I mean, the amount of times that I've upsold a service that was way more than the first service, but they you offered it in the way that they wanted it. They're complaining about price, or they're, well, my last guy did it for a 99. Yep, we're at 149. All right, well, uh, yeah, well, let's give you a shot. Instead of thinking, well, they're not going to spend any more money, they may not be thinking when compared to what they're talking about. So adding another service increases that. Listen, the services that you guys do, which, by the way, if you want to comment, tell me the services down below. I'd love to hear because I don't ever want anybody to be a jack of all trades and a master of none right? Don't do too many services. But again, I'm just some dummy with a microphone and a computer. So who cares what I say? But I also think it's very smart to have uh, knowledge in things and not go too far. But say you do the core, the core services are window cleaning, pressure washing, uh, roof washing, uh, house washing, right? Well, house washing falls under pressure washing um, and gutter cleaning. Okay, those are kind of like you find most every window cleaner. A lot of them, 99% of them do that. Those services.